Welcome, you're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. The Institute of National Remembrance plans to draft a law on decolonization, which means to get rid of imperial heritage. To discuss this, we, uh, to discuss this initiative, we welcome to the studio today Sergei Rabenko. He's an expert of the Institute of National Remembrance. Hello, and thank you for coming. Hello. So, tell me and our audience what the process of decolonization means. So the process of decolonization is the next stage after the process of decommunization that Ukraine started the year 2015. Have we finished it? Uh, we finished it, but uh, we understood that uh, the process of decommunization was not enough to get rid of this imperial uh, heritage. Because uh, on one of our activities, mm -hmm. when we invited uh, scientists, journalists, and specialists in uh, totalitarian heritage, we had a very interesting discussion uh, some years ago, and we understood that uh, this, uh, pa this page of uh, decommunization of the communist uh, heritage it is the top of this uh, big mountain, but it is not the whole mountain of this uh, imperial heritage. Because uh, now we understood that uh, the period of uh, communism was uh, nearly 70 years uh, for Ukraine, but the period for uh, the uh, colonization of Ukraine with uh, Russian Empire, Russian state, it was uh, it took uh, much more time and it is uh, much more deeper and it involved uh, very many people uh, to into this uh, imperial project. Now that we've realized all this, do, do, do we have enough legislative tools? to perform the decolonization process? Oh, it's the next problem that we uh, must uh, deal with. Because when we wrote uh, the package of the laws on decommunization, we had the experience of our neighbor states from Eastern and Central Europe, uh, from Czech Republic, of uh, Poland, of the Baltic state. Uh, we uh, saw what they did, uh, what uh, laws and uh, what other acts uh, their parliaments and their governments adopted. And uh, we used some of the experience to create our own uh, legislation uh, based and our own laws on decommunization. On the other hand, when we uh, start uh, speaking about what we should deal with our imperial heritage, uh, uh, colonization heritage, we understood that uh, there is no such experience uh, with uh, our neighbors uh, that uh, we may use. Because uh, many of these states, uh, they uh, did not even start this process. And uh, some of them, they uh, had such process uh, very many years ago. Uh, for example, for example, the Czech Republic, uh, they had uh, some uh, common process of decolonization from the, uh, from the Austrian-Hungarian or German uh, heritage uh, at the beginning of 20th century. And uh, it was the period of, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is another period and, uh, and other conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these conditions are not the same in which Ukraine is uh, nowadays. On the other hand, we also uh, had some uh, discussions with our uh, colleagues uh, from other states that uh, studied this uh, process, uh, how this uh, process uh, took place in other countries. And we understood that uh, we, on the other hand, we may use the uh, experience of uh, some other countries. For example, the Irish uh, experience mm -hmm. uh, when they uh, started to create their own state uh, in the 20th century. Also, a very interesting example is the uh, example of Croatia, when they uh, fought for their independence at the beginning of uh, 1990s. And uh, they had also some uh, common process uh, what to deal with the Serbian imperial uh, heritage uh, in the life of their country. There are uh, very many uh, another uh, different uh, exp uh, dif uh, different experiences. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, the countries of uh, Northern Africa, of uh, Algeria, of Tunisia, mm -hmm. of uh, some, uh, some part of uh, India experience and uh, we should uh, study these uh, examples and uh, to take something uh, from their experience uh, which maybe uh, which we may use in uh, our uh, today's life we're talking about getting rid of imperial heritage what exactly do we need to get rid of let's focus on 
peculiarities and particularity? Uh, if we speak about the process of decolonization, uh, the result of this uh, process, uh, I think, should be much more the same as uh, there should be the uh, exam uh, the uh, the result of uh, decommunization uh, to change the mind of uh, our uh, citizens, to change the mind of Ukrainians. Because uh, if we are speaking about uh, communism nowadays, uh, very many people uh, they understand that uh, what uh, communist um, uh, regime mm -hmm. was and what crimes uh, they commit and, and uh, why we should deal uh, something with their uh, heritage. If we are speaking about the period uh, that was uh, before 1917, mm -hmm. about this uh, Russian imperial heritage, very many people still do not understand uh, why we should uh, do something with uh, such part of this heritage as uh, the names of uh, the uh, people who were on the uh, who were the uh, monarchs of the uh, Russian uh, state with uh, the people who were on the uh, general uh, post in the Russian Imperial Army for example uh, several weeks ago we had uh, the uh, process of uh, removing of the monument of uh, Alexander Suvorov mm -hmm. from the uh, courtyard of the uh, Kiev uh, military uh, uh, military Lyceum and uh, very pe very many people uh, still do not understand why it was important for the uh, military man, for the uh, people uh, who are uh, in this uh, institution to remove such a marker of this uh, imperial heritage. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, as the Russian, as the Soviet propaganda uh, told of Suvorov, he was a very great uh, general, uh, he won very many battles and he loved his soldiers very much. But uh, they do not speak, do not speak, uh, did not spoke about the other hand of the activity of Suvorov. Uh, it, uh, it means uh, his activity uh, in Europe uh, mm -hmm. during the wars against the Napoleon and uh, his uh, role in the genocide of the Crimean Tatar, uh, of the uh, first annexion of Crimea that uh, took part uh, during the period of Russian Empire, and also uh, his role in the uh, uh, Warsaw uh, in the Polish rebellion uh, against the uh, Russian Empire that took place in the 19th century. And this role was not so positive as the propaganda told of Suvorov. Where or what should we start with the process of decolonization? I think that... Uh, Which cities? Do we, do we start with the capital or do we start with rural areas? I think we should start uh, with the uh, public discussion on this process. Uh, we should tell to our citizens why do we need such process. And after that uh, we should uh, have some uh, results of these discussions and only after that uh, we should create some uh, laws or some other legal instruments mm -hmm. uh, what to do with this uh, process. Uh, it should not be as uh, it should not be the process uh, as uh, m uh, much common as the process of decommunization because as we spoke about the decommunization uh, as I have told uh, we have some experience of our neighbors we have some uh, some list of the symbols of mm -hmm. this uh, regime, but uh, the symbols of this uh, colonization period, uh, they are uh, much uh, stronger, much wilder than uh, the uh, symbols of the uh, communist regime. And uh, what we should do with this symbol, should we remove them all, should we transfer them uh, in some way, uh, it should be the result of uh, public discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming here and explaining us all about the newly appointed initiative. That was your Guy Rabenko, he's an expert of the Institute of National Remembrance. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for the rest.